Hey, what's up everyone? Today we are going to continue our discussion on the random forest. Uh, we are going to move on and to, to discuss another topic which is feature importance. I'm pretty sure for some of the course projects, you may consider use the feature importance to uh, better improve your model or just to reduce the train, uh, the train time. Okay, so today we are going to move on to a new data set and that is a uh, bank marketing data set and they collected this this data set by just calling uh, the people who opened the account in a specific bank and ask them uh, what are the customers information and then uh, uh, make an offer to the customer and decide whether uh, this person is going to take the offer from the bank or not. Okay, so as you can see, the Y column, that is the that is the target column we are going to make the predictions on. And you can see for each of the customer, we have the age and the job, uh, marital, uh, marital status, education, etc. So we have some categorical, uh, categorical uh, columns for sure. Okay, so our question is, well, which features are important? And if we throw away some of the unimportant features, can we improve the performance? Okay, so we know, well, by just looking at the data, we can definitely, this is a classification problem because we are uh, predicting labels and I would guess the labels, uh, there are only two values, yes or no, right? And uh, this data is not that perfect. There are many categorical features uh, and there is a day, there is a month. So how do we do with those categorical features? So the first thing I would like to try is I put all the categorical features, the column names into a into a list. And after that, I create a iteration to iterate each of the categorical features and take a look simply to see how many distinct values are there. Okay, so well, not it's not a surprise for the months and we have probably 12 distinct values. Okay, and another one is for the job. We do have a lot of distinct values. Okay, so those are all the categorical features we are going to deal with. Okay, and uh, to move on. Well, the first thing is I want to do uh, something different to the months column and other than that the remaining columns i would say they are all categorical features and i just want to do a a one hot encoder and pay attention to here so for this column and i guess that is long right long yes or no okay this is a just a binary feature but when we send this column long to the one hot encoder which is here and then and then we do if we do the drop one and then we only leave one feature. So this is a probably the easiest way to cast a binary feature into a numerical feature with either one or zero. Okay, so I got I do the get dummies for all the categorical features defined here. And after that, okay, so you can see months is still a categorical feature and the target class is now moved to the middle, but no worries, it doesn't need to be the end of the data frame. And the next thing, well, for the months, I'm arguing that uh, for the January, February, I want to replace them with one, two, and three. So why am I doing that? The reason is, well, I am arguing for the February, that is the next month of January. So February is January plus one. So is that really meaningful or not? I'm not quite sure to be honest. And especially we have the month and we have the day, right? So is that the right thing to do or not? And you can argue with me, it may not be the right thing to do. Otherwise, if you're just treating January as a distinct feature and February as a distinct feature and you don't want to emphasize that February is the next month to January and then you may just tr do the one hot encoder as well so well this is the part for the exercise okay so the next part I apply the mapping and then I map all the months uh, all the columns in the all the values in the months to a numerical value here like this one five for May 
Okay, so now this, this, this data set is really ready and we want to do the train test split and then I do the random forest classifier. Okay, I want to pause here and ask you a question. Why I didn't do the standard scalar? Is that necessary or not? Think about that. The answer is no. Uh, it's not necessary at all in this case because we are doing the random forest and this means we are doing we are creating a lot of decision trees and on the decision tree model we are not mirroring the distances between two samples since we are not mirroring the distances and it doesn't matter if you want to do the standard scalar or not so I'm going to leave the data set as is Okay, so we do uh, the training and then we do the prediction and we got the accuracy score and the accuracy 90%. So, well, it seems that we should be reasonably happy with that. But remember, the topic today is feature importance. So after we have already built the decision, uh, decision trees in the random forest, in this case, we want to think about how we can get the important features. So think about that. When we are doing the decision trees, when we uh, on each of the split, we do a greedy algorithm, right? So we find the split which can maximize the Gini difference between the root and the weighted Gini of the two children. So we are doing the greedy algorithm. This means if we do a lot of splits on one feature, this means that feature might be a good feature because when we are splitting on that feature and then we have a big drop of the genie, right? So having a lot of decision trees and those decision trees, if you want to look into them and see what features they are doing the splits on, it may give us a reasonably good idea on what are good features. And guess what? Random Forest can do that for us. Well, uh, the easiest thing we can do is if you do ra uh, the random forest model dot feature importance and it will give you the data. However, that's not so readable. So I decided that I want to put that information into, well, by the way, that's a series. Okay, I want to put that into a data frame. So I want to use the X string columns as the indexes and then for the only column I'm going to name that importance and after making that into a data frame the next part I want to make a sort on the importance and then from the high to low and remember well the higher the more important the feature is okay so I put all the information into a data frame and then I did a sort and then you see the duration Duration is the most important feature. Well, remember this data set was collected with the, uh, with the phone calls, right? So if you spend a lot of time uh, talking to a banker and uh, considering and discussing whether this offer is good for you or not, then probably, well, the longer you have this discussion, the more likely you are going to take this offer. So duration is, uh, is one of the the most important feature that makes sense and then the balance the age well they are all important features and to my surprise the day is also a important feature this means on specific uh, date of the month and people are more likely to take the offer probably I would guess that should be the end of the month. So at the end of month and probably some of the people are struggling, waiting eagerly for their next paycheck. And at that time they may need a small loan. Well, I don't know, but that's my guess. Okay. So if you go down, okay, down here, the job, so job management, job technician and job, the blue color, what are they? They are the job column after we have done the one hot encoder, right? So there are a lot of distinct jobs. So for each of the job, we are going to make a distinct column like the job management, job technician. So management and technician, they are all distinct values in that job column. Okay, so it seems that for the job, well, the, the job uh, well, no matter what kind of the job they do and they are, the jobs are not that important. So that's my observation for this one. 
and well uh, I'm gonna pause here because this video is more than 10 minutes now and I will see you guys in the next video bye